look, this is a George team, now winners of 25 in a row. I've been on the no UGA will not win a championship bandwagon the entire okay. season. I'm slowly eroding. And so I'll ask you this, uh, with what you've seen out of Carson Beck this year, has he proven to you that he is a national championship caliber quarterback? Oh, not yet. Mm -hmm. And and I'm of the camp. I've, I've no hold, hold up, hold up. I'm of the camp. I love Carson. <laughs> and I've been on this train with him and Bobo when they were getting negative. You know what? On Twitter for no reason. I'm like, what are you watching? Because I think, I think mm -hmm. Bobo has actually done at times and, and maybe, okay, no, this, this year, Bobo's done a better job of getting Brock Bowers the ball than I think uh, Munkin ever did. Now, Munkin has more weapons, I think, at times in the backfield to work with, so the offense is different. But I think Carson's a heck of a player. I will say – I'm going to say no just yet because I think the last little piece that I need to see from Carson is some consistency in the deep ball. When you just pull the numbers – and he missed a couple, I think, mm -hmm. last week. Um, when you pull the numbers, he's second last in the SEC in balls over 25 yards. And I think that's one wow. of those things that – Stetson always got the knock for not being a deep ball guy, which I don't think was ever true. I think at times in his career, he threw the ball really shallow and tried to line drive it. And so the margin of error was lower, but he would make those big time throws in big time okay. games. I think that's what I need to see from Carson. A few more of those. And I think this team is there and he's there. Well, well, Stetson early in his career was like that. Like Stetson's totally. biggest knock after his first season was like he was not accurate down the field. Then second, third season. He got better and better, but he had two years of experience. I mean, this totally. is still Carson's first year. So I don't want to defend him here, but where would you yeah, rank you him? Like I do a little bit. <laughs> I, think, I, I think of Carson, and I know it's year one. I know it's hard to leave after one season and go to the NFL, but like I think he's a first-round talent. He's got the size. He's got the arm strength. He's showed enough to me. Where would you put him in this NFL draft class? Because we talked about how loaded it is at the quarterback spot. Would he still fall in the first round? I don't think so. I don't think yet. Mm -hmm. I think he could. Are you putting him ahead? Are you putting him ahead of? I'm trying to think of the fringe. Guys. I'm putting him ahead of I, Bo Nix. Yeah, I am putting him ahead of Bo Nix. I don't think yeah. Bo Nix is like NFL talent. I think he's a great college quarterback, and there's totally. a reason why he's played five years in the in, in college football. And has moved on. Like I think, yeah. he, if there, someone could fall in love with him in the right system, but I've always been there too. Um, I mean, Caleb Drake, so. one, two. I mean, I mean, Bex of who's three? He's, he's a who's fucking three? giant. Right, like, and, like the NFL loves that. giant white guys, and he's a giant, and he's got thick ass Isn't legs. Still, though, I mean, a lot of that. I think a lot of that is say, changing a little bit. I, I think the ability to escape and have mobility, which is why I think, from a pa pure passing standpoint, yes, Aaron. I, I think yeah. he's one of the. I, I just in my notes, I was looking over my notes before this. I wrote down somewhere like I think he's one of the best pure progression intermediate passers mm -hmm. in college football right now. Yeah. I mean, his ability to like go one two. And then in rhythm, hit that, whether it's a comeback backside or a deep cross or whatever that is with accuracy on time. I think the mobility and I think some of the haven't quite seen the deep ball consistency yet would would still put me at, I think he's a mid-round guy if you said he's going right now. And, well, okay, wait, sorry, sorry. I think he's a late second, third guy, not a mid-round mm. guy. I think he's a late second now. But again, I, this is a deep, loaded it class. Who would you play? Who's ahead of him, though? So you'd put Bo ahead of him? I'd put... Yes, I would put Bo ahead of him, and I don't. And that, but that's saying a lot because I don't. I don't love Bo. I haven't for a lot of his career. I think he's done a lot for himself. Yes. this year. Um, Where does Penix fit in? Penix is ahead of him for sure. I think. I think Penix is an absolute. You don't star. worry about Penix. So you're Penix in the big three, then. Yeah, the the Williams, so. uh, Drake put, May, Michael Penix. I'd put. I'd put. Oh, this is going to be. A, <laughs> you're not going to like this one. I might put. I think I'd put Quinn ahead of 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 Beck. Hmm. I think they're. I think. I think you. Could I'm interested like to see where a couple of these guys. For reasons it, it, are very similar, but I wonder if a couple of these guys end up staying too. Jordan, like talk about should. that. Of of you know, Drake is not playing as well as he did last year, and, and you can blame you know new OC, different receivers. You know, Quinn is banged up right now. You know, if 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 both those guys don't finish the season off where they want to, it doesn't look like 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 North Carolina will with their second loss. Texas is still everything in front of oh. them, but could you see both those guys coming back next year? And how does that change the whole situation? I will. I, I absolutely would you. It's, I I would because of uh, well, I probably wouldn't if I was Drake because I think he's a bona fide one or two. So I think he's a bona fide yeah. top five draft pick. And yeah. I think maybe not being necessarily the number one doesn't always hurt you if mm -hmm. you're the number two, right? Because you go to a team that's maybe traded up to get in the top five. That's a fringe yep. kind of needing one more piece, and you could be in a much better situation. But I think I think in this day and age, like taking money and either test in the transfer portal like who's going to be bama's quarterback next year gonna be somebody that's not on that roster right now i think 
No, it's Tyler Buckner. Drake May. What are you talking about? <laughs> Full offseason of Buckner. That's just what he needs. Come on. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Look, look, okay. Let's 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 bring it back to college football. Really Even did. though, look, I, I agree with the okay. Here's where I stand on Georgia. I've evolved my Georgia take, right? Okay. I've always said that I thought no, they were not going to win the national championship just because replacing Munkin and um and Stetson Bennett was going to be too much, and that that was what pushed them across the finish line. Slowly but surely, they get the win on Jordan Hare, a couple big home blowout wins. You see Carson Beck overcome Brock Bowers like it's nothing this last game. Like McCoggy, I'll be like, okay, I'm starting to come around. I think this is where I'm at today. I still think playing the math. The most likely scenario, it's never happens in the 30s. All things we know. I don't think Georgia wins three in a row, but I do feel like for the first time this season, I've finally come around to that. I think they're good enough to potentially win three in a row. Like I was pretty hard out on them. These next three. I mean, I mean, I mean, no, no, sorry. I mean, this year, right now, this Georgia team, right now, I've been out on hard since the beginning of the year, since preseason. Oh, sorry. And then three, three in a row. Yeah, yeah, I, three, yeah, yeah, excuse me. No, no. So I finally come around to the idea that while I still don't think they will, just playing the odds, um, I, I feel like they are, they're starting to appreciate in value. Like they're getting better as the season goes on, which is what championships team do. And who right now are you like, they're beating Georgia? Yeah, and that and that's the other kind of fair point, right? No, but I mean, mm, Michigan, Michigan remains untested. That's what I would say. Ohio State's still very interesting mm. because they've survived the two big tests that they've had. Aaron, even though I mean, Ohio State, Aaron, you can't I'm, like Aaron, you can't see shit. that unequivocally. Their shit. No, I can't. They won't score. You can't. You can't win championships if you don't have. I an think offense. Carson Beck and the Georgia offense would struggle against that Ohio State defense. No, you think they would just roll? Which defense are you more high on? Georgia's defense? Well, I say, even if you want to give a flip of a coin, like they're both on the equal playing fields, Georgia's offense is significantly better than Ohio State's offense. Right. And Jordan, answer that question. Like, how how do you? I asked Josh Pate the same question last week. How would you rank in points in today's game of offense to defense? Like, what would you prefer? And I know this, you're an offensive guy, I'm but close. yeah, look at, look at the Ohio State Georgia game last year. Yes. I mean, look at and, and as good as and this Georgia defense is very good. They're not as good as they've been in the past. Mm -mm. Look at all those no. those games that they had to score forty something when it counted, whether it's an SEC championship or a playoff game where they needed that to win. And those are some of the best defenses we've ever seen. But playoff games are just different, man. Mm -hmm. Like teams have extra time to prepare. You're gonna score points if you have dudes on offense. So I'll take that offense all day. Which you is see, why you scored a bunch of points on Michigan's defense for goodness sake. So Michigan's defense was great. Oh, totally. Which is know the which signals, is why think, but. Like, yeah, as does the entered signals. The weapons they happens. have this year and how Bobo's using them is scary. Mm -hmm. And I just back to the Carson Beck thing. When you watch him throw the ball to Lad McConkey, it's different. Like Aaron, from a quarterback perspective, like when you watch the velocity and the timing, mm -hmm. like he just he does not blink. He doesn't hesitate. Like Lad is such a great route runner. That second, what is that? I think it was a second reception. The one he over route, great stair step route to create yep. separation, flips it, goes up. I mean, just yeah, like, he's ridiculous. And so when Ladd is healthy and then you add Brock back into that mix, I think they need to use Oscar a little bit more like they were using mm -hmm. Brock. I think he can do that. I think they didn't really last week. Maybe they didn't really need to the way the game that went, the way the game that went so early um, in their favor, they didn't really have to. But um, that offense is, I think, better than last year in a lot of areas. Oh, I okay. I, I feel like that's okay. Again, again I, last year, okay, I, I, I know. Know. I got so, 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 they go, so, so I, I got so I, much shit last year because I was like, I don't think the receivers are very good outside Lad. And not, I scared they by that. They weren't. They weren't. They Arian weren't. is just a dude that you can throw in every now and then and see if you can win on a post. AD was not really healthy and not a shadow of who he is now. Kyrus Jackson and, and Dominic Blaylock were just guys. Mm -hmm. Right now, their their guys, their third and fourth guys are Dominic Love and Rara Thomas, who are dudes that can make plays. Yep. When it's not Brock or it's But they not haven't really made Brock. that many plays yet. Yeah, like, what did they call it, one touchdown apiece thus far? Yeah, well, it's not all about the fair. touchdowns. The yards have been great. The catches have been great, yeah. especially the past three weeks. The yards have been all right. Yeah, I mean, I think they broke though, 80 those yards. Those are guys like that, that have to win you the game. Yeah, that, that's, that's the right that, point. Like, yeah, You can't just yeah. go, okay, we don't really need to worry about this dude if, if he's one-on-one. -on -one. Like, So go back to Team Bob's question, though, Jordan. Who who concerns you with the dog? Like, who's who are legitimate teams as we get going towards the end of the season now? Like, who could beat them? It, that they have on their schedule right now? Yeah, on their schedule or just in general? I'm not really worried about – let's start with their schedule. I'm I'm not worried about Tennessee uh, as much no. as maybe I think it – like they, they found the recipe last year against a much better Tennessee offense. You press mm -hmm. and be physical with those dudes on the outside, they can't win. Disrupts mm -hmm. the yeah. timing and it's just that Tennessee offense gets swallowed up because Georgia's too physical. So I'm not worried about that because that 
Milton and this uh, offense is not what it was last year. Um, Ole Miss had just watched them. They got a, I mean, they're good, but that pass game is struggling now. Like mm-hmm. they're not good up front, Jordan. I don't good. think they're good up front, man. On either they're side not, of the ball, right? Really. I mean, Vandy mm-hmm. was hitting home with blitzes left and right. I yeah. mean, that game got kind of ugly at twenty six nothing for like two and a half quarters. You're like, it feels a lot closer than it looks on the scoreboard. Missouri, I think, is an interesting one, mm-hmm. uh, only because actually two faceted because of how the game went last year. Missouri's going to walk in there with a ton of confidence and with how they're playing this year. So I don't think they're going to walk in going, man, we are, we're the little brother. We got to, you know, we, hopefully we got to put it together and see if we can keep up with these guys. Um, and I think Kirby Moore doing such a good job with how he moves Luther Burden around their night and day who they were last year. Brady Cook is night and day the quarterback, just from a health yeah. standpoint. No one knew he had his shoulder torn last year and was playing with that. Mm-hmm. Um, he's night and day different. And up front, they pressure a quarterback, the, the you know, they're like, fifth, I think, in the country in getting either under duress, hit sacks on a quarterback. So if you can disrupt them a little bit, that one to me is a little scary. And then you get into, I think, Michigan just because they can play physical. And the way that Mm -hmm. game goes early dictates a lot of what happens in a game like that. Ohio State just because I do think their offense will come around. I think the defense is extremely talented. Um, So those are, yeah, those are a couple. Uh, all right. All right. So, so look, it is that time of year. If you live in the South, chances are it's like finally just starting to get cold for you right now. Yeah, I hate it. Um, gumbo on. weather's coming in, dude. Uh, we flipped the calendar to November here in a couple of days. And with turkey season comes championship season. And you look at the SEC this week. I mean, let's go, boys. 1v2 mm-hmm. in the West, 1v2 in the East. Mm. Um, since we already and and really it feels like so much of what's been done up to this point's all been table setting, right? Like getting yeah. the meal ready. And now it's ready to see who's gonna follow through and think cook this turkey the correct way. Uh let's stick on Mizzou, Georgia for a bit here. What's the spread on this? Aaron, do you know off the top of your I mean, head? Georgia's like 15. They're it's double like digits. 15, right? Yeah. Okay, so so Crazy. so is it mm. Mm. So is it how like how interesting is this really then? Right. I love how it sounds. I love this Mizzou team this year. Everything you just talked about, Jordan. But like are we are we actually gonna be here on the other side next Monday and uh be talking about a Mizzou team that that put up a fight or made it close, or is Georgia just gonna steamroll to their 26th win in a row? I mean, there Missouri is a much better team than Auburn, than Vandy, and those two teams kind of Stuck around, right? I don't think That's you true. were ever like, you know, I mean, Auburn especially stuck around, but even Vandy, like, both you know, on the road, though, both on the road, though, totally 100%. Vandy's a tough place to play on the road, I know that well. Mm-hmm. Um, especially <laughs> with the stadium, you know, it's just that the wind gets it's a wind tunnel now. No, oh, no, Jordan, you gotta, no, Jordan, you gotta understand it's a, it's, it's a road game for you, so technically, no, no, you no, no, know no, how look, hard look. it is as a road place that for you. True. I do, I <laughs> you'd have to go silent cadence a few times at home. How sad is that, Jordan? Uh, <laughs> Georgia yeah. fans this year don't understand conceptually. That some teams actually not only play games against teams that may beat them, but sometimes they even have to go to that team stadium. They're not used to it, right? right? They pretty much get everybody in Athens this year that has a pulse and that's barely with even anybody with a pulse. So Aaron may not be fully familiar with what you're talking about when you say road game. I'll uh, say God, I, wish game I said a few things about Missouri. I think one of the the best things that I saw, and I had the Kentucky game, is and I know it's Kentucky. I'm not I'm not trying to pump up Kentucky here at all. But oh, they don't do that to the T-Bob. Yeah, they were, team up. they were on the road down 14 early in that game. And it looked like Kentucky was just going to steamroll, right? And so to fight back on the road down that much early to win it by more than two scores, like that just tells you a lot about, I think, the maturity and what happens in adversity. And that's what I worry about in a game like this, right? If, if, if Georgia starts fast or Missouri starts slow, then and traditionally you're like, okay, that's over, right? Mm-hmm. So I think this is a different Missouri team just from that standpoint. Well, and and it that was one of those weird ass box scores game, Jordan, where like you look up and you don't the math doesn't add up. You're like, how'd they win so big? It's totally. like Luther Burden didn't do shit and That's like it, Brady like, Cook's stats hard. were like all right. And it's like, hold up now. So yeah, I agree with you. Like that made me feel better about Mizzou than anything. I still think Georgia probably rolls this weekend Roll. and Aaron's gonna demand that mm. we all crown them. I mean, I look, I I I I hope uh, they do not. I hope they do not roll. But if it's 15 for a reason, you know, like that, yeah. that's that's kind of where I land, unfortunately. If it was a Mizzou, I wouldn't say that, right? It t- so, are you more, so you more worried about Ole Miss or Tennessee than you are Mizzou for Georgia? No, sorry. I want to be clear because I've been hardcore. Georgia's going to win the SEC yeah. and will lose Roll in the through, playoff. Okay. That's been, yeah, that's been my take since the preseason. Nothing's changed. If anything, I'm actually coming around as much as I hate it. 
I feel like I'm getting Stockholm syndrome by all these bulldog fans that we deal with constantly on this show because I'm finally starting to come around a little bit to the idea that maybe Georgia is going to win the Natty. Listen, I, I, I'm more concerned about Georgia Tech. They, they're just the killers in the ACC. Shut the they, fuck up, Miami. Bro, bro. they took down UNC. <laughs> like, you better watch out, Georgia Tech. Haynes King is uh who he's playing right now Dude, uh, there's nothing the, i hate the more forgotten sec but they got like four or five dudes on that team that were kind of like four tough games t bob cool. all those bitching about georgia's schedule missouri ole miss in knoxville and then georgia tech a bowl team georgia tech right now taking out people left and right it is a I just hard wanna, schedule i just want to clip that and just clip that sentence and put it up there and listen back to it so aaron has to hear the absurdity of what he just tried to utter just, into our headphones. And they just Shut to up. Beat a five and two Florida team too. So I mean, the stop it. Yeah, exactly. Five and two Florida team. That is a team that is going to finish six and six, and you know it. Florida I, I, is I about know. to I lose know. nearly every game from here on out. 